Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're doing part two of our cute little dinosaur pattern. So in part one we went over how to make this cute little orange body and in part two we're going to be making some cute scales. I'm doing this really pretty forest green that's going to go along with this nice orange color and our goal in today's video is to make basically the scale, the tail, the arms, the belly, if you choose to have it, this is what it looks like versus having a belly and then not having a belly. And then these cute little stinking feet. Look at those feet and how cute they are. I love them. I love how they turned out. They're so cute. I love how the little feet on this turned out. So I'm totally geeking out about this, but we are going to be going over how to do all the added little add-ons. The first video is probably around an hour long. The second video is probably going to be just as long, but I wanted to get it all put together. And if I made a three hour long video, that would be way too long. So I separated it. I'm going to be uploading a couple days apart. So make sure you get that printable PDF down below. If you're interested in that, it's on our Ravelry. You can get it for free. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all those things. If you click on the little pattern link, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you actually redeemed the coupon code. It's kind of nice. I get a lot of redemptions, but not nearly as many comments of people actually being like, oh, hey, I downloaded it. So it'd be kind of cool to be able to like talk to people who've downloaded it and what they think about my pattern. I love getting comments and feedback about my patterns. So it helps me make better patterns in the future. So all right, let's go ahead and go over to Future Me where I'm gonna be going over how to add little body parts to our little dino. All right, so if you are over here now, I imagine you've already watched the very first part. We have finished our little body, and now we're gonna work on our little body parts. So first and foremost is the belly. I'm just gonna get this, I mean, it's not foremost, but I'm, I'm getting it done right now. Um, I did a magic ring and did the same thing as on the top of the head here, except I didn't go up to 42 stitches. I only went up to 36 stitches. Uh, I have this done here and I really wanted to show what I do in order to make this nice seamless fasten off. So we're at the end here. I did all 36 stitches. So 6 to 12 to 18 to 24 to 30 to 36. We're going to cut off a nice decent long tail and pull that through like so. We're going to then take our darning needle, which is what we uh, use for this, and we're going to... I already have a video where I slowly go through this, but we're gonna basically skip, we're making a fake stitch on this. So we're gonna skip this and go into the second stitch away from our final stitch right here. So skip and go in from the front towards the back, and that is going to create the first leg that goes over this stitch right here. Then we're gonna take our darning needle and go through the center of our stitch over here. And what I like to do is I actually like to kind of pick up all the little legs on the back side. That way I can hide it and also pull it through at the same time. So I go through all of them like this. This isn't necessary. I can actually chop off my tail from earlier. It's not necessary for it to be there because I worked it through the first 12 stitches of the second row just like I did for my little dino over there. So we're gonna go through the backs and pull that through. And I like to tug it until it's the same size of the stitches over there. I kind of just pluck on them, make sure they're all the same size. This is our fake stitch right here. I'm going to pull on that a little bit, lift it just a little bit, and make it so that they all look like they're the same size. And then I'm going to cut my tails because I've already worked them through the backs of these stitches. Go a nice little tuck right there. And then I hot glue it on. Honestly, I know everybody on my channel who's familiar with it uh, knows how much I love hot glue. I like to also kind of tug on where all my increases were. So I'm going to tug and wiggle, tug and wiggle just a little bit, making it so that my sides are a little bit more rounded. I like to do it like this. That way I can then just hot glue it on to the center right there. 
I'm gonna go hot glue this on and then we're gonna work on the little arms next using our main color yarn. All right, so I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, but I'm gonna show you how to do the arms. So I already have one made and they're super simple. They're very easy. And so I'm going to grab my main color yarn. This one I had worked up into something else, so that's why it's a little crinkly. But we're gonna grab our tail and create a nice little slip knot, just so we could do for all of our little amigurumi pieces here. We're gonna make our magic ring. However you do that, I do mine by chaining two. So one, two. And I'm going to skip the second chain and start working into the first. We're going to put six single crochet inside of that. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna pull our tail so that our magic ring is shut. We're then gonna take our tail and work it as if it is a piece of our stitches. I'm going to go through front loop only like I do for all of this. Just to clarify, put our tail in front and we're going to increase all six of those stitches. So we're gonna go one, same stitch, increase, next stitch, kinda hard to see with the tail in front, but next stitch is one, two, next stitch after that, third stitch, so one, two and i'm working with my tail as if it is a piece of it that way it doesn't pull apart at all i like to tug it every once in a while just so that it's not like getting kind of floppy inside of the stitches i don't know how to phrase it other than that but basically that's it one two our fifth stitch one two and then another stitch one and two we're gonna pull on our tail just a little bit not so much that you like pucker the first six stitches but just enough and now we're gonna count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we're gonna drop our tail i'm gonna treat that as my stitch marker essentially and we're going to for round three just single crochet around so one two three four five, six, seven, eight, oops, splitting it, eight. It's gonna wanna flip out on itself, just flip it right back out. Nine, 10, 11, and 12. And in the first stitch of what would be row four, we're just gonna slip stitch off, create a decently long tail. I make mine about 12 inches, almost always. And you can choose whether or not you wanna cut your original tail, so this right here that's sticking out, or if you wanna cut it, that's fine. I worked it in those front stitches, that way I didn't have to make, uh, I didn't have to keep it in the set if I didn't want to, but I like using these as um, stuffing basically so I'm gonna put that in there and when I sew everything at the end uh, I add these on with just a little tiny bit of stuffing on the underside and then I add them right along pretty much where your increase is finished on your body here so I put one on this side and one on that side evenly across our belly here next up we have our scales okay so we are now on the scales I have already made five out of the six scales that I need. I'm, I'm just gonna do all of the extra pieces just on the side. Those are gonna be set aside over here. And what we're gonna be working on next is we're gonna grab this scale and we're going to get our secondary color yarn. Keeping in mind that while we're doing scales, the scales are actually the first part of our tail. So I'm gonna make this, but the same exact method for rows one, through six are going to be what we use for our tail later on. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. But for here, our goal is to make these little triangles. And how I make a triangle is we're gonna create our little ring right here. We're gonna again go into our magic ring with our secondary color yarn. In this instance, it's this like forest color, which I love. And it's so pretty, it's gonna look so nice against this. And our dino body's falling. There we go. We're going to make our ring by chaining two. So one, two, like so. And we're going to put 
four single crochet inside of our magic ring. So one, two, three, and four. So now what we're going to do after our first four single crochet is we're going to work again through the front loop only and for row two we're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase. This is going to want to flip in on itself which makes things a little bit more tricky because it's so small but we're not going to let it and we're also going to again do our tail in the front like so just to kind of make it so that that tail isn't going to go anywhere. We're going to single crochet that first stitch and then go on to our second stitch, tail forward, and increase. It's going to want to flip inside out on itself. I find that when you have such small amigurumi, it wants to do that, but we're just going to kind of correct it and not let it. We're going to again put our one single crochet into the next stitch. Our goal is to go from four st stitches up to six stitches. And this is our final increase for row two. We're again going to put two inside of that one. Drop our tail, pull it a little bit just to make sure that it's not like weird and inside your stitches, but drop it. And we're going to repeat that on row three. It is a single crochet one increase, but this time you're going to do it three times instead of two times. This is how we're building up to our triangle shape. So one, next stitch increase one it's gonna get easier i promise past row three so one and then increase i like to go through front loop only again it just makes things look a bit more bubbly and it hides our stitches a little bit more same thing with uh some of you may notice i think i mentioned this in the first video i wrap under versus wrap over I just think that wrapping under looks a little bit better. It's an X stitch versus a V stitch. This is our final increase for row three. And I'm going to actually take my tail and pull that through that final stitch. I like to double check and count. Make sure I have nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're perfect right now. Perfection. All right. So now we're gonna go into row four, and again, we're gonna stagger our stitches. I explained this in part one, but we're going to single crochet one, increase, and then single crochet one. If you're going to stack it versus your stagger, you would single crochet two and increase, but this time we're splitting that up and making it so that our increases do not line up on one another. So again, single crochet one, increase single crochet one one increase one and then move your tail along i'm gonna take my hook pull that through and again go through like so now we're on row five and we're going to single crochet three and increase we're going from 12 stitches and going up to 15. so one two three fourth stitch is where you increase so four and increase one two three fourth stitch increase one two three and increase move our tail along and then we're doing our final increase round for our scales this is row six and our goal is to not flail our yarn away from the screen but our goal is also to go from 15 stitches up to 18 again we're doing these repetitions and repetitions of three so here we're going to stagger again and we're going to single crochet one two increase one two do that again one two increase one two one two 
increase one two take your tail move it along and for row seven we're going to maintain those 18 stitches basically so we're just going to single crochet around all of these stitches maintaining so I'm going to fast forward through this part real quick as I get this done and then we're going to slip stitch off and that was our final stitch right there we're going to slip stitch off pull that make a decently long tail and then we're going to attach these after we make our tail but it's easier to show this because it's the same process for the first few stitches of our scales as it is for our tail so I did these first just so that we can show you that so I'm gonna tuck in my tail like so put this with the rest of our scales this should be the last time that you need your secondary color and we're gonna go into making our tail next all right, so I went ahead and did the rows one through six for the tail because it's the same as the scales. Our goal is to go from 18 stitches and get them up to 36 stitches basically for this little tail guy. So we are currently at 18 right now and we want to double those stitches. We are now going on to row seven for the tail. Uh, and to do that, we're going to single crochet five. So one, two, three, four, five, and on the sixth stitch, you're going to increase. One, two, three, four, five, and increase, and then one, two, three, four, five, increase. That was the end of row seven and we're now at 21 stitches. We're gonna move our tail along. And from here on out, I'm just gonna show the repetition of what you do for each row once and then I'm gonna fast forward me doing the other two repetitions. You're still gonna do them three times for all of them. So this next one is row eight. Our goal is to go from 21 up to 24 and we're going to stagger again. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three, increase, so two, and then one, two, three, all the way around. We are now going to row nine and we're going to single crochet seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and increase. Our goal is to go from 24 to 27 stitches and we are on row nine all the way around. Row 10, our goal is to go from 27 to 30. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three, four, increase, one, two, three, four, all the way around. Row 11, we're going to go from 30 to 33, and we're going to single crochet nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and increase. And you're going to do that two more times. Row 
We are now on our final increase round for the tail. We're on row 12, and so what we're going to do is go from 33 to our final 36, and we're going to single crochet 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, increase, 1, then another 5, so 1, 2, 3, four, five, all the way around again. All right, we just finished off. We have 36 stitches on our work, and now we're gonna move our tail along, but for rows 13 through 15, so for three rounds, we're just gonna maintain those 36 stitches and single crochet around. I'm just gonna go off camera to go do that. I'm also gonna add on my hot glue gun top now. I'm gonna go add on my belly, my arms, and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna attach it to the backside um, once I get those three rounds done. And what I like to do is make sure that my bottom is lined up with my backside. That way it's kind of flat to the base kind of like so so just start attaching the back first along the bottom and then i just add it all along the sides in my normal sewing method which i have a link for uh down below if you would like to see that so i will be right back as soon as i get on my belly my arms do three rounds of this and add it onto the back side and then i'll show you how we do our cute little feet and how i add those as well back all right so i have sewn on the arms and i went ahead and did the tail it's all on but it's it's actually crooked i didn't notice it because my head was pointing in a different direction before i did anything so i'm just gonna lean with it the the tail's a little bit closer to one side versus the other but that's neither here nor there i'm actually gonna take all of these now and i'm gonna start along the bottom and attach and start going up and then keep going uh, basically just doing them back to back try to keep them as close together as possible I am gonna have one here another one here I'm gonna have one draped over the join seam and then keep going up until I get to the top of this head I'm gonna go do that off camera and then we're gonna come back and work on the little feet oh I also wanted to show this off so I have this over here it's super cute. I took the little feet that I'm about to show you uh, on the T-Rex. I took the little feet off of the T-Rex and I ended up doing like a Luna version of it where it's just kind of standing. I might call them Luna Stomp. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. I might do a little dinosaur head for this one too where it's similar to this where it tapers. But let me know what you guys think. I think it's super cute and I love how it turned out. I love his little feet. It's super cute. All right, let's go on and how to make those feet. All right, so our everything is on, our scales, our arms, our tail, and our belly. So now we're on to the little foot. And so we're going to have our first one already pre-done. I'm gonna let him hang out over there. Essentially, we're gonna create a rectangle shape. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. We're gonna have to go through the back loop only for one of these rounds. I believe that's round four, but I'm gonna show you how we get there. So we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're gonna take our active main color yarn. We're gonna pop that over there. We're gonna try to get our yarn untangled from each other. There we go. I can get there. We're going to create a magic ring and we're gonna try to work on the round, but we're gonna do it in a little bit of a different way. So I'm gonna grab this here, see if I can get a better angle. There we go. We're gonna put that slip knot onto our hook right there. And for row one, we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna skip that fourth chain and go into the next chain after that. So the third chain that we made, we're gonna go inside that one and do a single crochet, go into the next one, so that would be the second chain, and do another single crochet. And then on our last chain, so the very first one that we created, we're going to put a double increase. So a double increase is when you put two extra stitches inside. So we're going to go one, two, and then three. Pull on the tail a little bit, and then we're going to keep our tail, again, as if it is a piece of our work. But we're going to go and turn the corner, and we're going to work through the back 
parts of those as well. So we're going to skip again and go into the second one from our hook right there. And we're gonna single crochet into our first, keeping our tail as if it is a piece of our work. Go into the next one, single crochet two. And then in our final one, this little raised area right here, we're gonna go in and do a double increase again. So we're just doing single crochet two, double increase, both along the front parts of the chains and the back parts. Go back in two, so we're putting three stitches in here essentially, that same little loop right there. My cat is having some issues. No meow. What do you want? Okay, so now we're on row two, and we've already established our, our base here. So for row two, we're going to kind of start shaping our rectangle. So we're going to do more of those double increases. They're also known as corner increases because essentially you're kind of turning the corner for that increase. So we're again going to go into the front loop only. I do that unless I specify otherwise, which I believe I will for round four. Again, we're going to single crochet one and then two. I'm going to leave my tail kind of hanging back there a little bit. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna do another corner double increase. So we're gonna put three stitches inside that single stitch. This is our first little corner here. So there's one, two, three. And then in the middle one right there, we're gonna do another increase. And then we're gonna do another corner. So for the middle stitch right here, we're going to do a little single crochet right there, just one. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna do another corner increase. So one, two, and three. And that is what we're gonna do twice. So again, we're going to single crochet one, two, do another corner increase. So one, same stitch, two, same stitch three, middle single crochet, so single crochet one, and then do another corner. So one, two, and three, all in the same stitch right there. So here we've already got our base going along there. I'm gonna take our tail and pull that through just so that you can see where our start begins at. And now we're on row three, where we're going to essentially be, every time you do a corner increase like that, you're going to create extra single crochets along the sides and along the middle of your space right here. So here, instead of single crocheting two, like we did for row two, we're going to now on row three, single crochet three. So one, two, three. Corner increase, one. Same stitch two, same stitch three. And in the center between our increases, we're going to one single crochet, two in the next stitch and three on the other one because those created, we had a single crochet one for row two and those double increases created one along either side of that right there. I hope that makes sense. And then in this Next corner, we're going to do another corner increase or a double increase. So one, two, three, and then single crochet one because of that corner. You have that one right there. Now we're going to do that repetition, the single crochet three, increase two, single crochet three, increase two, single crochet one. We're going to do that one more time just to turn the corner. We do it twice. So one, two, three, double increase, one, two, three. Then in the middle, we're gonna single crochet in the first one, single crochet in the second one, and then single crochet in the third stitch. Next corner, we're going to go one, do a corner increase again, two, three all on the same stitch and now what we're going to do is um for row three on the very final stitch we're going to slip stitch into that instead of single crocheting one doing that makes it so that you kind of have a smoother seam when we on row four go through the back loop only 
So I'm going to start working through the back loop only, which means instead of going through the front loop only, which is what this is, this is the front loop. When we're working through the front loop, we're not going to do that. We're going to let that stitch drop, which creates this very cute little line there. I like how that looks. It looks a little bit more straight of a, a loop when I do the slip stitch. So we're going to do that. We're going to go through the back loop only, and we're just going to single crochet around. So one, two, we have 26 stitches here that we just want to single crochet around for. Going through the back loop only, I'm probably going to fast forward through this part. We're just working through all 26 of these stitches in the back loop only. Alright, we're on our final stitch here. I'm going to go through that again. Going through the back loop only, you should have 26 stitches on your work. And for rows five through six, we're going to work through the front loop only again. So we're going to again pick up going through the front loop only, and we're going to do that for two rounds. I'm going to go again, fast forward through this part because it's just single crocheting around through the front loop only. All 26 of those stitches is super easy. It just looks nicer when you've got that nice little ridge there. If you don't want that ridge there, you totally don't have to do that. Um, you could just go through front loop only for rows four through six, but I like doing the back loop only. It makes a little bit of a nice edge. And then for five through six, we're just going to single crochet around all 26 of these stitches. Be right back. All right, so I wanted to make sure that this is all lined up with where I started because it actually is pretty uh, sensitive to where you're going to want to um, line up your decreases. So try to make sure that your tail or your stitch marker is where it should be and that you've counted your numbers correctly, that you did 26 stitches um, both times and that you didn't just kind of like fudge your numbers a little bit. So now we're on row seven. We just got done with five and six. And now for row seven, we're going to start tapering this foot up into the ankle area. So here we're going to single crochet four. So one, two, three, four. And then this corner here, it kind of lines up with where your double increase is there. You're going to do a decrease of just those two stitches. I put my hook through the front loops of both of them and then single crochet like normal. And then you're going to do a double decrease. So how I do that is I put my hook through the first, the second, and then the third across all three of those. And then I single crochet like normal, like that again. And then I do another normal decrease as well. So that is decreasing four stitches. We've gone from 26 down to 22, and then I single crochet another 15 just to finish it off. So one, two. Fourteen. Fifteen. And then I'm going to move my tail forward. Move my tail along. That way I can keep track. We are now on row eight, and we're going to be going from 22 down to 19. So we're going to single crochet two. The first two stitches, we're just going to put up one single crochet and then the second single crochet in the next stitch. And now we're not going to do any kind of double decreases. That was just to get everything centered right there. Now we're just going to do three decreases. So this is our first decrease, two together. Next one is right here, two together. And then the next two stitches after that, two together. And now we're going to single crochet 14. So we should have 19 stitches now. So one, two, thirteen, and fourteen. Move our tail along just so we can, again, keep track of stuff. Move that along. We are now on row nine. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to decrease three times again. This time we're not doing any kind of single crochets. We're just going to go through and decrease those three. One, the next stitch, two, decrease, and then the next two is our third decrease. And now we're just going to single crochet 13 and we should now be down from 19 down to 16 stitches. So we're going to single crochet 13. One, two, and now for row 10 we're just going to single crochet around but on our final two stitches we're going to skip and slip getting us down to 15 stitches so we're just going to single crochet around 13 1 or 14 2 3 13 and 14 we're going to skip this stitch and slip stitch off in the final one right there that kind of makes it so that it's I like where the tail lands up there I again I'm going to leave an absurdly long tail I'd rather way too long of a tail than too short of a tail I'm going to pull that through I'm going to then take this tail and kind of just let it go back inside of the foot hide it inside of there, a little less stuffing that way. I'm going to go stuff this off camera, and then I'm going to go stitch it onto the side of my little dinosaur here. I'll be right back as soon as I get that stitched on. I like to try to put my dinosaur flat, just like I did with my tail, and make it so that I line this up here. I also like to take uh, stitch markers and I'll stab them through. I don't like these plastic ones, but I have some wooden ones that are over by my couch that I'm going to go use. They're called marking pins where you can attach it on. You can also just use sewing pins. I like to kind of like sit them up and pin it that way. That way I can know exactly where I want it lined up. I try to make it so that it's lined up a little bit like a couple stitches out from the belly and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It'll be pretty cute as soon as I stuff them both and I'll be right back as soon as I get that done. Okay, so our feet are attached to our little dinosaur. I love this little project. It is so cute. I am currently working on a velvet plush version of this pattern. I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook and a Bernays blanket yarn, I want to say. I'm not using the Hobby Lobby one, just the Bernays. I might use the Hobby one, one though for the scales I haven't quite decided if they go well enough together but that's pretty much it for this part two of our little tutorial next week we are going to work on an axolotl I need to figure out how I'm going to get these little head ferns to not twist I think it's both cute and also not that they twist I don't know I haven't decided if I like it or not it kind of looks kind of cutesy when it's like that but I'm making a ton of these little guys and I think they're super adorable. Um, also, let me know if you would like to see Brawny the Brontosaurus. I'm gonna post a picture right here because I don't have them on hand. Uh, if you wanna see a tutorial for that, I also have a pattern for another dinosaur called Brawny. He's a long neck. The body on that is really interesting. So I might post the tutorial just so I can show you how the body on that is formed and let me know what you guys think. All right. Thank you for watching this video. And before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys mean so much to me. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you can go to patreon.com slash knit and you can see the different rewards we have for our patrons there. Uh, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell before you leave if you wanna see more videos like this. Check out our Discord server if you also wanna meet a nice crew of people that are awesome. Until next time, guys. Bye.